Hi guys. It is a pleasant fall of 2020 evening here in the middle of the swamp in a secret undisclosed location on the planet. It is, uh, what, where are we now? Are we at Friday, November 20th, 2020? And, uh, well, I guess this is my second Chronicle of the Day, actually, because I recorded my ecological meltdown roundup actually last night, and I'm going to be doing most of my Chronicles of the Collapse uh, after dark in these early darkness winter nights for the next few months. So, uh, oh yes, this is Collapse Chronicles. I am Sam Mitchell. And doing what uh, I try to do as often as I can. And we're just going to take a little mixed bag of various flotsam and jetsam to add to my earlier roundup today. Let's start out in France where we have dead whales washing up on French beaches as scientists point to virus or starvation Marine biologists on Tuesday expressed deep concern over a spate of whale deaths on France's western shores amid suspicions the emaciated creatures were victims of a viral epidemic, starvation, or both. Yes. Uh, so far, as of a couple of weeks ago, we're now up to seven dead fin whales, the second largest species after the blue whale, and not one of them, uh, amazingly, had run into a ship or been entangled in fishing line. They're just showing up with no food in their bellies. From France to Greenland, you will not believe this, Greenland's largest glaciers likely to melt faster than feared. Hmm. The three largest glaciers in Greenland, which hold enough frozen water to lift global sea levels some 1.3 meters, could melt faster than even the worst case warming predictions new research has shown. Yes. Up until 2000, the main driver of sea level rise was melting glaciers and the expansion of ocean water as it warms. But over the last two decades, the world's ice sheets <clears throat> atop Greenland and Antarctica have become the single largest source of sea level <clears throat> rise. Um, there you go. Uh, this is one of the authors, somebody, Khan, quote, The worst case scenario is underestimated. Ice loss may be anywhere from three or four times larger than previously predicted for the three glaciers considered in this study. And, oh, while I'm thinking of it, I want to send out a uh, big thank you to, I guess, a, uh, Tom Ensalata has become the newest, uh, my, my newest general here on Collapse Chronicles. I really appreciate all of you sending in all these stories of doom and gloom and Tom Ensalata out there in Vermont has really been busy. I think the rest of these were submitted by either Tom alone or Tom and several other alert listeners uh, over the past week or so. Uh, this one uh, getting lots of play probably all around the Doomosphere. You will not believe this one from fizz.org. Ending greenhouse gas emissions may not stop global warming. <clears throat> How many times have we heard this one? Even if humanity stopped 
emitting greenhouse gases tomorrow, Earth will warm for centuries to come, and oceans will rise by meters, according to a controversial modeling study published Thursday. Yes, natural drivers of global warming. Natural drivers. Yeah, right. More heat-trapping clouds, thawing permafrost, and shrinking sea ice already set in motion by carbon pollution will take on their own momentum, researchers from Norway reported in the Nature Journal Scientific Reports. Uh, this, oh, this is Jorgen Randers. Uh, Jorgen has politely declined to be interviewed on Collapse Chronicles. So this is what Jorgen is up to this week. Quote, according to our models, humanity is beyond the point of no return when it comes to halting the melting of permafrost and using greenhouse gas cuts as the single tool. Yes, so uh, Jorgen is promoting sucking CO2 out of the air. We're going to talk about uh, sucking CO2 out of the air which, according to Jorgen Randers, is about the only way we're going to save the planet in a minute. But uh, what is the core finding? The core finding, and don't worry, the core finding of Jorgen Randers' new study, which is being contested by leading climate scientists, is that several thresholds or tipping points in Earth system in Earth's climate system have already been crossed, triggering a self-perpetuating process of warming. Yes, do you think so? Um, anyway. Uh, okay, but we were talking, you know, this is another, you know, Jorgen Randers is one of these uh, apocalyptimist hopium addicts talking about sucking CO2 out of the air, and, you know, a lot of these UN projections looking into the future assume we're going to start doing this, there's only one problem, uh, according uh, to the ecologist, yes, and that is that carbon dioxide removal sucks. Yes, it does. Carbon dioxide removal systems will put more greenhouse gases into the air than they take out. What a surprise. Carbon dioxide removal systems touted as techno fixes for global warming usually put more greenhouse gases into the air than they take out. A recent study has confirmed carbon capture and storage, which grabs carbon dioxide produced by coal or gas-fired power stations and then uses it for enhanced oil recovery, yes, emits between 1.4 and 4.7 tons of the gas for each one ton removed, the new research shows. And then the other side of the coin direct air capture, which sucks CO2 from the atmosphere, emits between 1.4 and, and 3.5 and tons for each ton it removes, mostly from fossil fuels used to power 
the handful of existing projects and um, then a good lord they break all of this down this uh, they have done their uh, homework this is all based on a study from Sakara and Lichtenberg. Yes, and uh, anyway, this would take me three rants to go through this. Uh, okay, let's get, this is written by Gabriel Levy. We have to, uh, we have to talk to Gabriel Levy. Uh, okay, so uh, he ends, let's get to the bottom conclusion here. Technologies are not neutral, they work in social context in contrast to biological methods big industrial CDR will for the foreseeable future at least be controlled by oil companies or the state these technologies are by their very nature inimical to collective control or operation yes uh Anyway, uh, we should fight for existing technologies, preferably small-scale ones. Yes, good luck on that. Uh, he, you know, he, he goes from uh, making fun of the apocaloptimist uh, correctly to becoming an apocaloptimist himself by the end of the of the article uh, but anyway again we're gonna end up uh, in this roundup and I think it was brother Tom who sent me this we do have some potential good news and it is about time that we have some potential good news this is coming from the fanatical futurist yes so we're going to look at our fanatic future here. The ultimate bioweapon, scientists have developed an extinction gene. Why this matters? Scientists now have the knowledge and the tools they need to create and deliver doomsday genes, which can selectively target and exterminate entire species. Here is a question that occurs only to madmen and geneticists, well, and doomers. How do you get a gene that kills a species to spread through an entire population? You know, this is one of the things that if it's just killing everybody, then not enough people will drop dead. It's got to, you've got to get your doomsday gene spread throughout your target species you want to eradicate from the planet. So uh, <clears throat> you can either make your gene deadly and therefore impossible to pass on or not and make it useless Yes. Uh, anyway, guys, this this quickly gets uh, way way too uh, complicated. Uh, they're talking about mosquitoes. What this is is doing is where we are with this technology. As you've heard about all these genetically modified mosquitoes, they're in, they're introducing. Uh, these doomsday genes and as much as I don't care for mosquitoes they are one of the basis of the food chain on the planet um, <clears throat> recently with the with the advent of advanced 
new in vivo gene editing technology, it has become possible to make genes that seem to defy evolution. And that means we could soon start releasing animals carrying doomsday or extinction genes that spread with astonishing speed and which eventually will kill off an entire species or even entire ecosystems. Yes. <clears throat> It sounds like the stuff of science fiction and nightmares, and many argue that is where this type of technology should stay. However, such an animal, you know, in meaning in this case mosquitoes, exist, and it is currently sitting in a laboratory at Imperial College in London. An apocalyptic mosquito carrying a gene that could one day end its entire species. Yes. Uh, so they explain that. Sounds rather benign, doesn't it? Except for the fact when combined with an extinction gene, which, for example, in this case, introduces sterility introduces sterility into an entire population it is anything but benign yes gene drive is what this is called get ready for the, uh, a new term for the uh, for the collapse gene drive is a methodology that artificially increases a gene's inheritance rate. Um, good Lord. So anyway, they get way, way too technical. And uh, so 99% of people are going to get lost. Uh, okay, uh, let's get down to the, we're going to read, get down towards the bottom, where we jump the shark from mosquitoes to us. Yes, to put this, all of this previous stuff that I skipped over into perspective, in this case, you know, with the mosquitoes, this is a genetic modification that wipes out malaria by wiping out the mosquito. In human terms, you could compare it to wiping out HIV by wiping out humans. And while there are arguments for both sides of the fence, the fact that we now have the technology and the fact, furthermore, that we have already used it to what has come to be known as the doomsday mosquito, humanity will find itself in moral and ethical deadlock. Do you cure the disease? <clears throat> that kills men, you know, in case of malaria, that kills millions of people by genetically engineering a species to go extinct. And if we can genetically engineer one species to go extinct, then which species is next? Us? That last one, you know, you know, humans, that last one as terrifying or uh, as gratifying as the case may be, as it might sound, is not as far-fetched as you might think. And governments around the world have already put this ultimate bioweapon on their watch list. 
as our understanding of this technology and this capability advances and as cost, you know, to do it continue to plummet, it is increasingly easy to see how one day a terrorist group could use it quietly and subtly kill off an entire race or population of people. And if you think that's a giant leap, then worryingly, it is not. Thanks to the Human Genome Project, we can already identify and categorize individuals with specific traits, uh, as well as their evolutionary lineage and all of this other stuff. And we now have the tools we need to help us create entire artificial genomes from scratch. By 2036, for example, scientists believe that they might even be able to use CRISPR technology to make the world's first artificial human ethics allowing, which of course they won't, at least in the short term. So, if we have the technology to eliminate an entire species from the face of the Earth forever, then the only thing preventing us from pulling the trigger in our moral compass and our belief in our ability to control the outcome <clears throat> the next time there is a mass extinction event, it might not be an asteroid that is the culprit. There you go. So never, I uh, never let it be said that the that these mad scientists uh, don't have something uh, on their drawing board that really could. Uh, save this planet and it ain't sucking CO2 out of the air that's for sure it's sucking humans off the planet but anyway uh, I'm going to wrap up this evening's uh, Chronicle of the Collapse and uh, what on this exciting Friday night in the middle of nowhere. Get out there and enjoy uh, your doomsday genes while you still can. Bye, guys.